you know, that's a touchy subject. <laughs> uh, we don't have the time to really go into all the ins and outs of it, but it's a work in progress. We have it here. We're working through some contract issues. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it to my agent to figure all that stuff out, so. It's gonna sound bite's gonna scare the entire football <laughs> world. <laughs> How has that been, though, with, with you and Anna? It's been fun. Yeah, it's been a, a, a fun thing for us to do this off season. Um, obviously now it's uh, kind of going on in the background, um, focus being here now. You know, he, he, I don't know if he's such a big podcaster <laughs> himself. Um, I, I would like to, you know, I'll give him some tips if he wants to, you know, journey into it. You know, because I obviously carry the nine and dime weight there. You know, he's kind of, I bring him along, you know, so, no, he's, he's good. A year ago, it wasn't all smiles for you because you're in this first game of the season. What is it like to have a healthy game mm -hmm. out there? It's huge. Um, obviously, I mean, it just it sucks being hurt. I mean, there's no being around it, not being able to do something you love. Um, so being able to be out here, um, being able to be healthy through camp and just play ball. Uh, you know, you, you cherish every moment that you get to step on that field with these guys. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. You treat every opponent with the same amount of respect, but when it's a team like the Lions, when you guys face the playoffs and prime time, does that add any more to it? No, I mean, like, like I've touched on it so much. You know, you, you got every game, you need to prepare the same as you would any other game. You know, I think if you're holding back anything just because it's in your head and more important game, I'd question why you're not doing that all the time. Um, you know, the, the respect is for the guys in this building, the respect in this room. I want to be out there for the guys, and those guys are out there every single week. So no matter who the opponent is, I'm out there preparing because I want to be there for, you know, my 22, my, my 53, and uh, the other 53 just happen to show up on Sunday. Cooper, noise, noise uh, when it's on the road, or is that place different at all? It was pretty loud last year. It was a pretty cool atmosphere. Obviously, Matthew coming back, um, things like that. It was a, uh, it was a really cool environment. It was and the only other game that I have. I mean, I wasn't even a part of the game. I was there though. Was the NFC Championship in 2018 down in New Orleans, um, where I thought that was incredibly loud. But I mean, Detroit last year was, uh, it was rocking, and I'm sure it will be again on Sunday night. So from your standpoint. Uh, when he goes to hand signals, what's kind of the challenge there? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously it's just uh, there's one one way, of, the one modality of communication is gone, and we just have to find a way to you know use the other ones. So um, you know, in some ways, there's a heightened sense of awareness of that too. And um, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard like if you lose a sense, the other ones are heightened. You, know, yeah. you get one of those kind of things where it's like, hey, you can't hear now, but. All the others, like you got to be dialed in to make sure you know what you got. Puka's success last year led to a lot of you know, life-changing opportunities for him. Did you have any advice for him on how to handle all the off-the-field things that come with being a successful NFL player? Yeah, and we talked about that a little bit just you know through our, our time in the off-season. Um, he spent so much time over at the house, and um, yeah, it was it was fun kind of going through that. And he has a lot of questions, and he talks all the time. So eventually, I get a word in here or there, and um, you know try to just yeah give a a tidbit of, you know, what at least has been helpful to me in my, you know, seven years of playing in the league, and um, and he's just been, he's been so great though, um, and um, yeah, he's he's a special dude. So I know there's there's a lot of things that he's navigating and going from a fifth round pick to having the success they had so quickly, but he's done a great job of that this offseason. Trey White, Trey White, this, uh, game, that. Okay. As yeah. you approach this game, it, you look at it as just one of seventeen, or the fact that it's a potential playoff opponent. Mm -hmm. Lions, the opener, is it different? Mm, no, I think it's, you, you treat it the same. I mean, I know there's all the implications, all the different stuff that goes on outside of this building, but you know, like I touched on, it's, you got to prepare the same way. Uh, you got to have the same attitude going into that game. So just try to treat it just like any other game you're playing. Trey White mentioned that having conversations with the receiving group here has really helped him as he's mm. uh, attested his roles, not only coming off the Achilles, mm. but also his technical roles. Mm. Over your time talking with experienced corners, young corners, what are some questions maybe they've asked you in that regard specifically, and how has that helped you? Yeah, I think it is a lot about asking about, you know, depending on the routes, what are we seeing? Are they tipping things that are allowing us to make decisions a little faster and things like that? And it's all, I mean, that's a, at the end of the day, you, you're, you're, you know, decisions are made like this, you know, one little tip, finding a slight edge here or there, that's where games are won or lost in this league. And so I think it's just trying to find those little things like, hey, is there something I could have done differently? there that would have made that more difficult. And that's that's 
really the root of every question that you're asking is like, is there something I can do that makes this a harder or later decision for you? From a personal standpoint, uh, for this season, just being a veteran, what do you kind of see as success um, as you like go into the season and then also at the other end, what will make you feel mm-hmm. like yeah, well, and there's always going to be the goals that you have for yourself. And, and every year you come into this, the season starts, every team's goal is to win a, win a world title. And um, that's just what it is. Now, how you want to measure success, I mean, that I think goes to individuals around this league, um, what success is. I think guys play for a lot of different reasons. Some guys play to make it to the Hall of Fame. Some guys play for the next contract. Some guys play just truly because they love the game. Um, and, you know, for me, I think, you know, I've measured success a lot of how my mentality was when I look back on the year. Was I fearful stepping on the field that I allow myself to play freely to allow all the work I'm doing during the week to just let that go on Sunday and play without any regrets of whatever's going to happen I think the worst thing is looking back and saying man I was hesitant here I wish I'd just gone for it because the worst thing that can happen is you know it doesn't work and um, you know so for me it's about having that that mentality of attacking you know playing you know from a sense of I've already won and you know playing from that sense and not saying I'm trying to I'm not fearing failure, I'm attacking the opportunity to go win. And so that's how I kind of measure success, and you know, everyone has their own thing, though. Cooper, when we've talked, to, when we've talked to Puka in the past, uh, you know, he's mentioned that he still doesn't feel like he's reached the level of success that he should, in part because of the standard you set mm-hmm. for the entire room of the season you had in 2021. Mm-hmm. Beyond just, obviously, the work that you guys did this summer, uh, you know, working out together, how else are you seeing him you know, basically try to reach that standard that he's going for? Yeah, you know, I think, and I think what he, I think what he's speaking about, and like, guess there is, everyone wants to reference back to 2021, but um, I think when you talk to Puka and he looks back on his year, it's it's looking at plays and saying, man, I just know how much better I can be in that play, how much better I can do and on this route, on this run that way, whatever it is, I can be so much better. And so I think for him, it's, it's that's like the standard is seeing that and now being able to improve it and go out and do it. You know, and so I think that for that for him, that's been his focus, and he's done such a great job of you know, being out here and being intentional about those things that you know maybe were things like last year. He's like, man, I just wasn't on my p's and q's on this route or on on this concept, and he's just done such a better job this year of understanding the intent and just his energy going in and out of in and out of plays, and um, I think that's where you know his focus has been. Have you uh, stayed in touch with Jared through the years and recently at all? Or? Yeah, you know, we've, we've talked back and forth here or there. Um, I think I owe him a dinner, actually, uh, when he's back in town. So, yeah, we've, we've, we've stayed in touch. And obviously, I mean, we've went through so much together. And um, you spend so much time with these guys that, you know, you in, the, in this building. Uh, you know, those will always be lifelong friends. Whether, you, whether you're talking to them all the time or not, you know, that's going to be something I'm always going to be a, a friend of yours. Cool. Can you talk, you talk about the, oh, sorry, you go. Sorry. Cool. <laughs> with the success that Kyron and, and Puka had, how do you foresee that uh, opening things up for you? Yeah, well, I mean, I think this this offense, I think, really works best when you've got multiple guys all around that can make plays. Um, obviously, it becomes tough when a defense can play one guy and, um, you know, assign two guys over there and everyone else has one-on-ones. And, you know, I think we present something offensively that makes it really hard to do that. So um, the more we can take advantage of those matchups, I think the better we'll be. As you go into a second season with Michael Fuller, mm-hmm getting to know him a little bit better and also how he works with players. What can you tell us about him that uh, maybe you wouldn't know from the outside looking in? Yeah, so Mike Mike loves to cook. He's a real big fan of cooking. He loves his like fine cheeses. He's he's <laughs> He likes really. He's part of the Finer Things Club. If you're if you're an office <laughs> fan, he's he's a part of the Finer Things Club. Um, you know, he he only buys really expensive shrimp and fish. Uh, he really likes the wagyu. You know, he has his fancy like grilling gloves that he wears. He's really proud of. Um, but to be fair, he does a really good job of it. It's not one of those things that he just buys the stuff and it's just like charring everything or you know what I mean. Like he he does a good job of you know he down the line. I could see him opening a restaurant. I've, you know, I've, I've eaten, been over to his house, eaten some of his food. He, I could see him opening a restaurant down the line. So, you know, keep an eye out for, uh, you know, the Fleur Steakhouse opening up, you know, whenever he wants to be done coaching. It's a really good metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> Has that rubbed off on you at all? The, the, the finer things? <laughs> the, the finer things? No, you know, I've got, I will say we, we made the mistake of getting our boys a few, like, really, like, one time we like, trying I can't remember what the special occasion or something we like got some really nice food just to try at the house 
and our our my middle child would only eat the like really expensive stuff. You know, we had like we had the New York steak for them, and then we had the wagyu, and they he would only eat the wagyu. And you know, we had the we had the you know little shrimp uh, sashimi. He only had the shrimp sashimi with the caviar on top. You know, like it was. Yeah, no, we messed him up. So he's good luck. Good luck to him. But um, no, yeah, no, it hasn't. It hasn't rubbed on me too much. I'm. We're pretty simple. We're pretty simple people. Um, he's a, he's a tier above, I say. And you talk about this being just another game for you, but it's week one, game one. You've done it plenty of times. Are the nerves still there, and how do you control them, or is it really just excitement getting ready for this? Yeah, I think there. Yeah, it is excitement, and there, there's always an element. I've been ner nervous for every game I've played since the great kids, you know, since Pop Warner football. Um, it's that, those same butterflies, um, and you love that. You love that feeling. And then once the game starts, it starts, and you're playing. Um, so there's always going to be those those nerves and things like that, but. Uh, I think most guys in this league, I mean, Sean gets out there and he's he's feeling the butterflies, you know. So it's just it's something about the guys that play this, play this game that, you know, that's just kind of a part of it. And um, when, once the game starts, so you're just going to go out there and play. When was the last time last you one, felt guys. this healthy entering a season? What kind of confidence does that just give you for yourself and for the team? Yeah, I know it has been a while and it does. It, I mean, I feel, feeling good. Just being able to go do what you want to do. I think being able to mentally see something but not have your body respond and do what you want it to do. That's, that's tough, um, but being able to go out there and just see, react, do, and know that you know your body's been trained to react and handle the load that you're putting on it, it's, um, it, it's what makes this game really fun, is being able to see it and execute it. So I'm um, feeling really good and excited to get, get things rolling. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Hello, hello. hello. Doing pretty good. It's hot out here, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> It was a good one. I mean, it was a grind. You, mentally, you got to be able to lock in, and I feel like Matthew talks really fast. Sometimes it felt it felt a lot faster today. That's for sure. <laughs> How is, how's your knee feeling? Everything's been feeling good. It's been nice to be able to get back and get my feet out under me, and like it was a lot of anxious feelings of being out there and just kind of watching everything go, knowing that we're trying to find that rhythm and flow of what we ended the season with heading into this new season. But it's made it even more exciting to be part of the walkthroughs and then especially getting out there and practice. You played through a lot of different. Oh, uh, not great. First, I'm uh, feeling like, and I know that we talked, we, we watched the tape and the ref called me out, but I was like, man, if uh, one knee, I'm pretty sure equals two feet and stuff like that. So I wanted to send him a message be like, Hey, I caught that ball, but, uh, uh, kind of just being like, where, where do I go from here? Kind of trying to figure out questions knowing that, um, you work all off season to be ready to go uh, for the first game of the season you have setbacks in the way they come and just be like, how, what's our game plan to move forward? So it was nice. We built a game plan and then uh, we're here for week one. You played through a lot of different things last year. Is that something you think you would have missed time for a regular season situation? Um, I'm not necessarily sure. I know that there's definitely uh, some time where I, I was, I know I would have been able to get out there and move um, effectively at all in the football field. And that's why there we kind of built that game plan to, to be able for me to progress and uh, feel like I'm capable and ready to move out there for week one. We mm -hmm. talked to you uh, throughout this offseason. You mentioned that you, know, you still don't feel like you've reached the standard of success as far as what was set by Cooper in 2021 mm -hmm. within the room um, coming off of last year. Beyond just the workouts and some of those other things, what else did you, have you done to try to reach that level of some kind of preparing for this season? Yeah, I think understanding, I feel like I, I, like I've mentioned before many of times, like I love being a part of the run game and being in part of the box is something that's so fast and uh, evolving every every time that we get in there. We have new guys, we have Jonah Jackson, we have new guys like Steve uh, call, making calls and figuring out and see, hearing who's calling what and talking to Kobe Parkinson and uh, having like new communication. I, I, me and DA, we, I feel like we're, as we're, we're, we're draft mates, like we are, we are able to communicate to our own level, but it's nice to get back in because every guy communicates a different way, um, even to get back out there and coop and see some of these flight motions for Matthew to see me. So um, there is, uh, when you're out of the game, all those kind of minor things that you take for granted come back in the, the big screen of like, man, I got to get those every time. Puka, kind of a two part question. Did your fitness, uh, because you elevated it so high coming in, did that help you with the knee? And B, how concerned are you, if at all, about the timing that you may have missed with getting practice reps? Yeah, I think it, it definitely made it nice because the one thing I see from Coop out there is he never takes himself out unless Coach Yarbrough is yanking him out there. So I feel like uh, being able to, um, well, obviously never wishing injury, but then being able to feel like the work I had put in was allowing me to come back and hit the ground running and stuff like that. So feel really confident of where I am right now and then uh, definitely feel confident for what's going on on Sunday. I know that you and Coop 
work together pretty closely in the offseason. What are some of the things that you were able to take from him and learn from him that you maybe wouldn't have been able to in you know, a group setting? Um, I guess some of the intricacies in like some of our, our, our quick game routes and stuff like that, talking and understanding leverage, um, and then just timing. There's ability there, and there's timing in plays where you're going to open up your stride and you're going to get the full length. And then there's going to be times where um, you're gonna, it's going to feel close quarters and you're going to have to shorten up your stride to be able to cross the defender's face and stuff like that. So um, get, not necessarily running different routes and stuff like that, but be, be able to fine tune some of the stuff that we continue to do all the time. Puka, after all the personal success that you had last year, what's motivating you in going into your team? Um, the one goal I know I for sure have is to play in uh, all, all regular season games. That was something I was able to accomplish in my, my rookie year and to be able to go out there and be there for my team and for myself out there on Sundays is something that I, I hold dear to my heart and that's a challenge that I'm willing to, to be ready for. When you think about a year ago, the Thursday before Seattle, we're not all standing here talking to you at a podium. Uh, how do you describe the difference from that Thursday to this Thursday? Um, yeah, def definitely way different. I can think of that. Yeah, last year I was going home, I was sitting on my boots, and uh, I don't, I can't just, just thinking and just lot, look, thinking about football, but not being having uh, anybody else kind of think about how it's going to go for me. And just kind of envisioning the success for myself and stuff like that, and how, how each play is going to work out for me. That was all I could think of. Was, hey, coach said on this play, I got a motion over here, I got to block this guy, or I have this five step route, this seven step route. So it's made it more fun to be super dialed in on what I got to do, but then also to be there for my teammates and to be able to feel more aware of what's going on around me because it takes all 11 out there and that's what makes it the most fun. A few moments ago, Coop was saying how great he feels coming into the season, first time in a long time. How much of a game changer is that for you when you go into the season? I think um, it's a game changer for the Rams just because everybody knows what Cooper Cup's are capable of. Uh, and to be able to see it firsthand and to watch and be like, hey, I'm trying to hold myself to this standard as well um, has made it so fun. Because if just like we kind of talked about earlier, like I feel like I had success, but the standard has not been reached yet because he's continued to push it every day. We're in a new season and he understands he's had, you had to rebuild yourself to come out for the new season ahead of you. And uh, there's nobody I feel like does it better than Cooper Cup. So uh, everybody's ready to see number 10 out there on the field and we are too. Your success, more, guys. your success last year afforded you a lot of seemingly life-changing opportunities this last year. You know, how do you try to stay grounded amidst all of that changing your life? Um, I think my mom, my mom is my number one help for that. Uh, she is, uh, she's my number one fan, but also uh, the, one of the people who knows me the best. So even in all the media stuff that I get to do, she, she'll tell if I, I'm slipping up on something and uh, she'll call me and say, hey, what are you thinking about on this stuff? But uh, my family is the people I rely on the most, the people that I get to talk to the most and know me in and out and they can call me, uh, they can call me some mean names and it, it, won't, it won't digest the way it would from somebody else. So unless it was maybe from Coop, I'll let, I'll let Coop get away with uh, a couple mean words. But uh, other than that, my family does a great job of keeping me centered and uh, I wanted them to be a part of the success that I'm having. In terms of saying you? Cooper is probably one of the very few people besides my mom that calls me Micaiah. Whatever comes after is always up for up for grabs, but he's one of the very few people that calls me by my legal name. <laughs> Last one, guys. And, and kind of attitude, what's one of the biggest things you've kind of surmised and observed from Cooper that you hope to carry on with this team? I think his calmness um, with him and number t uh, Matthew have uh, a level of collectiveness and calmness that's on the football field that everybody in the huddle and when you're out there with them that you can feel it's like man whether I don't know what's going on I don't understand the coverage somebody might be blitzing and I'm not seeing it like being able to look out to my left and be like hey what what's going on it's just he's not there's no fluster he's not trying to make sure that you don't know what's going on he's, he's going to communicate and those two do a great job of making everything feel like everything's all right <laughs> of course thank you guys good to see you guys have a good one